All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, we will be discussing the Assembly Concurrent Resolution 188. It's our kickoff meeting for this effort. My name is Isabella Nicosia, representing ISO Stakeholder Affairs, and I'll be facilitating the web conference today. Um, I'm here with a few of our project members, project team members. So we have Stacy Crowley, our VP of External and Customer Affairs here at the ISO, and she's also our executive sponsor for this project. We also have Phil Pettingill, our Director of Regional Integration, and he's also our project lead. Um, we have Ken Swain, our Senior Project Manager, Holly Taylor, our Manager of Regional Affairs, Tim Kammermeyer, our Lead Legislation Affairs Specialist, and also our State Affairs Lead. Um, and then we have uh, Jaba Wang, he hasn't joined yet, but should be dialing in here soon. He's our Technical Lead for this project as well. And then we are also joined on the line today by a few folks from NREL who we will hear from later today. So before we get started, I have a couple reminders to go through. This call is being recorded. The recording is for informational and convenience purposes only. Any related transcription should not be reprinted without the ISO's permission. Um, these calls are structured to stimulate open dialogue and engage different perspectives with the understanding mm -hmm. that stakeholders have reviewed their material. We did post this presentation to the regional solutions page on the ISO website uh, last week, so you can find all the materials there. Um, and then in the interest of time today, please just repeat, uh, refrain from repeating or reiterating what has already been said so that we can address as many comments and questions as possible. And if you need technical assistance during the, today's meeting at any point, please send a chat to the event producer. His name is Roy. And then for questions today, we will be taking questions throughout the call. You can raise your hand and enter the queue by pressing the raise hand um, or using the raise hand feature in Zoom or submit your question through the chat. I will be keeping an eye out for any that come through there and I will read it out to the group. Um, and then if you did not have the Zoom webinar call you or connected to audio separately, you'll need to press pound two to raise your hand. Um, and then a reminder for everyone, please remember to state your name and organization when asking your question uh, so that those on the line know who is speaking and where the question is coming from. So the agenda for today, I'm gonna hand it over to Stacey Crowley here in a moment for some opening remarks. Um, she'll provide a little bit of background on the ACR 188 effort, as well as information about partnering with the California Balancing Authorities. And then we'll hand it over to Phil. Um, Phil will cover um, an overview of ACR 188, as well as the project schedule and stakeholder engagement. And then we'll hear from um, NREL. So we'll turn it over to Scott Hess for the, um, introductions of the NREL team, and then both the ISO and NREL will have some joint presentations on the review of the draft list of studies and then take joint questions. Um, and then we'll hand it back over to Phil at the end for some next steps. So with that, I will hand it over to Stacy. Thank you, Isabella, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this kickoff call for um, ACR 188. We're pleased to get started and just wanted to Kick, kick it off and then I'll, I'll hand over the substance to Phil. But um, as Isabella said, I am uh, the VP of External Affairs at the ISO and also the sponsor for this um, effort within the organization and happy to be working um, with NREL and the other California balancing authorities and stakeholders on this process as we go through. So um, we were uh, pleased to see uh, Chair um, Chris Holden, put this resolution forward last this past session. Um, and it really was to raise awareness of the changes that have occurred in the energy industry over the past um, several years with regards to clean energy policies and um, the need for diversity of resources and just the integration of, um, of renewable energy into the system and really making sure that uh, we are coordinating with our neighbors and doing the best we can to be effective um, to meet the goals of the state. So this uh, resolution was meant to do that, raise awareness and bring um, a lot of the good studies that have been done over the past several years to light, summarize them, and then just really identify the key issues to, to going through the next steps. Phil will talk about that more in detail. Um, I did wanna touch on, if you could switch to the next slide, 
Isabella, the, um, the partnership with the California Balancing Authorities. This was part of the resolution, but also really part of, um, of just uh, demonstrating the coordination across, uh, across the state as we look at this. And so on this slide here, you'll see the list of balancing authorities that are engaging with us on this effort. Um, and uh, some of them might look like they aren't <clears throat> California BAs, but I wanted to touch on a couple um, NV Energy has a small portion of um, control in the Lake Tahoe region. And of course, Pacific Corp has um, load in the northern part of California. The Western Area Power Administration has uh, some balancing authority responsibilities in Southern California. And then of course, our sort of all in California balancing authorities, including the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, Imperial Irrigation District, the Balancing Authority of Northern California and Turlock Irrigation District. So we're pleased to be working with them um, and, and NREL on this effort. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Phil Pettengill who's gonna go through the background of the resolution and uh, what we're up to. Thanks. Great, thank you, Stacey. And uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm going to dive in a little bit, maybe somewhat, um, somewhat redundant on uh, as we get started with some of the things Stacy said, but I thought what I would do is uh, just sort of talk a little bit from the project standpoint, how is it that we got to where we are here? And uh, of course, on this slide, the last piece is what Stacy was sharing with us, where Assemblyman Holden had introduced this ACR 188 to really provide a uh, a rich set of information uh, in regards to what's happening with organized energy markets. But I wanted to say, uh, since when? And it really, in our view, takes us back to the Senate Bill 350 that asked us to do a very comprehensive study and that study results came out in 2016. So it has been uh, almost now a full six years uh, since that time that we released that. Um, so the large body of studies that we're going to see and talk about as part of the project really are those that have happened sort of in that time frame and subsequent to 350. There's a lot of material in 350 that's uh, still of, of a lot of value and partly because it was broad enough to cover, as we say here in this first bullet, not only the economic or cost saving benefits, but what was the impact to disadvantaged communities? Uh, how about what are the benefits of uh, emissions or greenhouse gas reductions with a regional market? And of course, uh, as well as grid reliability and, and bringing just helping support the integration of renewable or clean resources more generally. Um, you know, it was a multi-state effort, but there's obviously now been a number of multi-state studies that we'll talk about and highlight here. Um, and of course it did at the time, uh, talk about the need to change ISO governance, but 350 is now uh, a few years old. And so the effort now is sort of move on from there. So let's go to the next slide. And let's talk about uh, maybe some of the key deliverables that come out of the ACR 188, um, starting to drill down in some of the things that we need to address as part of the project and certainly open to comments and feedback to all of you, our stakeholders, as we, as we start to get into this. But I thought I'd uh, highlight um, the top five or six kind of things that are in the, ACE, in the resolution uh, for all of us to focus on. The key thing that we're talking about today, uh, of course, is the relevant studies that have an impact on um, regional cooperation and potential expansion of, of the ISO's market. Um, how do, those, how do those studies or how does a market actually effectively advance the state's energy goals? Um, and not just California, but obviously a regional market would provide benefits to multiple states as they try to achieve their particular energy goals. And then finally, um, how does a, a regional market actually impact the transmission costs? And what are some of the benefits and value of having a, uh, a broader use and maybe effective use of the transmission that, that is potentially already here or could be developed as we continue to, to go down this path of a clean energy grid. Um, there's a couple of other key elements though that are beyond the studies. Um, uh, the resolution specifically looks at and calls for, have there been any updates? Um, and for those of you that have been tracking uh, SB 100 activities here in California, there was a multi-agency study that came out. And so the resolution asked us to see if there were any updates to that study um, when that was, you know, since that was actually delivered. 
Um, another piece, of course, is look more broadly regionally in regards to what are other states doing um, in regards to their two regional transmission uh, discussions, um, in particular, Colorado, Nevada, and some of the other states in the Western interconnection. So we do need to address those. Um, and then more, uh, more generally, just collaboration between the states on the different energy policies. So at this point, we're envisioning that it'll be principally the ISO team and staff that'll deal with those elements, but certainly uh, leaning on our friends with NREL in terms of some insights that are coming out of the studies in these places. So um, good segue into the last point here on this slide, the point being that uh, we have engaged NREL um, and we're gonna spend a lot of time with them in the rest of this meeting um, in, in introducing their team and starting to talk a little bit about the, the studies that, that we've identified. Um, so let me just move to the next slide because in the next slide, I wanted to just give everybody a sense of our timeline and how we see this playing out. Um, the resolution does require us to file the report by the end of February. Um, so we've got a few months um, but as typical, what we'd like to do in an ISO uh, initiative like this, we really do want to have an opportunity to engage with all of you, the stakeholders. And so this is our first call, our kickoff call, if you will, to look at the studies. Um, we see that the next month, the month of November, we'll be working with NREL and trying to get the draft report pulled together. And then we'll come back and we'll post it and have an opportunity to have a stakeholder engagement and some discussion about what have we discovered and what have we placed in that draft report um, in regards to the goals that the ACR is asking us to do. But more importantly, just the different uh, uh, elements of either uh, technical studies or uh, emission uh, benefits of markets um, and get an opportunity to just engage with stakeholders on what we have in that draft report. And then of course, as we move to the beginning of next year, then the goal will be to actually finalize that report, uh, look at submitting it to the legislature, and we certainly uh, expect, and there may be an opportunity to have a public hearings or some other discussion about the material once, once it's in the legislature's hands. So um, I think I'm gonna stop there. And first of all, Stacy, let me just uh, open it back up to you. Anything that I may have missed in terms of characterizing what our goals are here and what we're trying to accomplish on, on the timeline for, this, for the project. No, I think you did a great job. Okay. All right. Hmm. Well, let's go, let's go to the next slide. Um, and, and actually, before we dive into the NREL stuff, actually, uh, Isabel, why don't we back up a slide here, leave it on the timeline, and let's open it up and just see if there are any questions, any comments from stakeholders, because our next uh, element in the meeting today is actually introduce NREL and start talking a little bit about the study. So let's see what comments or questions we might have. All right, so as a reminder, you can raise your hand using the raise hand feature in Zoom, or if you dialed in separately to the conference, then you'll need to press pound two. Okay, I see one question that just came through the chat it's from uh, PGP. So how can stakeholders suggest studies to be added to the list? Yeah, thank you. Um, we're going to talk about that as we get to the end of our meeting today. But in short, um, you can get to the ISO's website. Um, we'll talk about what that link is. And we've actually placed a uh, opportunity uh, where we've, uh, for giving us comments, we've got a comment uh, template that we're going to ask um, all stakeholders to provide their feedback on. But that does include identifying any additional studies or and letting us know what you think the value of those studies are or even the studies that we have listed. Um, so we'll get to that um, at the end, but certainly if you go to the ISO's website, we've got all that material there uh, and how to provide that written comments back to us. Thanks, Phil. I'm not seeing any other questions in queue at this time. Okay, all right. Well, now let's go to the next slide. And let me just take this opportunity to introduce uh, Scott uh, from the NREL team. He's gonna introduce the rest of their, their folks and um, let us know, if you will, Scott, what their respective roles are and how you guys uh, see supporting us in the California balancing areas on, on the project. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks, Phil and Stacy, And it's great to be here uh, on behalf of NREL. So my name is Scott Hasse. Uh, I lead our strategic partnership projects with state and local jurisdictions.
jurisdictions across the country. So we've been doing a lot of work in California over the years. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to weigh in on this. Uh, I will uh, quickly just introduce the team and actually ask uh, Mark and Brittany to come on camera as well, maybe just give a quick background on themselves. The project lead for this uh, is David Hurlbut, who folks may know. He unfortunately cannot join us uh, until a little bit later during this call. He's also working on the National Transmission Planning Study for DOE, so he had a call that was previously worked on, uh, could not be on that. But David, if, if you know him, he's got a long history of work in this space, uh, working on kind of Western regional markets, and I think uh, he'll be coordinating the overall NREL work on this project. Uh, supported by myself, where I'll primarily be the relationship manager with uh, Cal ISO and the BAs, uh, and then Mark and Brittany will be supporting David on the technical analysis side of things as we pull the studies together. We do have a draft of those 30 reports that are listed there. We definitely want stakeholder input and feedback uh, on that. So I will ask uh, Mark, maybe just give a, a quick background of yourself, and then uh, Brittany, maybe you could do the same. Sure, happy to do so. Uh, nice, nice to meet everybody. My name is Mark Greenfogel. I work in uh, policies and compliance within NREL's uh, acquisition services group. I've been with uh, the lab for a little over a year and a half. Uh, prior to that, I practiced environmental law in Philadelphia, uh, representing um, interstate compact councils on water issues and uh, natural gas uh, regulatory litigation um, as an example. And prior to that, worked as a project uh, finance associate at Millbank Tweed, Hadley McCloy in New York. Uh, so looking forward to, to working with everyone and turn it over to Brittany. Hey everyone, I'm Brittany. Um, I have been at NREL for a little over five months and um, I work in the Accelerated Decision um, and Decision Support Center um, in strategic policy and innovation uh, on a variety of decarbonization issues. And prior to NREL, I was at uh, ICF Consulting um, as well as UT Austin um, where I got a master's in engineering. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you both. So uh, I'm not sure if David will be on. He thought probably around uh, noon our time was when he would join. So it seems like this call is going pretty quickly. So we may uh, <laughs> we may be able to get get through that before, and we'll certainly bring him up to speed. Uh, but, but yeah, I do want to stress again that we would love feedback. We want this to be an open process, and also the approach that we're taking is really to make sure that. We've got that initial list identified. If there is anything missing, please let us know or other thoughts about relevance of different studies. We'd love to get that feedback as well from uh, the different BAs. And we are on an extremely tight uh, deadline as the first slide showed, trying to get this up by the end of February. So we'll be uh, digging in pretty hard here over the next couple of months. Um, I think that's all for the intro uh, uh, on the end side. So, okay. Well, I don't know. If, or space. No, that's fine, Scott. Um, and and okay. we knew we had that conflict. You want to go to the next slide? And Phil, I think, are you going to step through these initial? Right. Yes. Un un unfortunately, didn't yeah. get out of that because he's actually leading that discussion. Yeah, I will. And Scott, it sounds like you're having a, an issue with your bandwidth anyway. Yeah. You're breaking up a little bit. So uh, um, that's okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so let me, let me take over from here and just walk through our, our, our folks through, um, through what we've done. And I guess in a way, what you see here, everyone, is we've identified uh, groupings, if you will, of the, the various studies that are on the list. There is a comprehensive list here at the end of our presentation today. But we've also posted a comprehensive list again on the ISO website. And, and when we get to the end of our presentation, we'll give you the link to that if you haven't already found it. So you'll have it uh, as well. But um, what we thought we'd do just for, just for legibility, because um, it starts to get a little bit of an eye test already here, is group these things into different categories to give you a sense of 
the number of studies we have in a number of different categories. So maybe the easiest thing for me to do here is rather than talk about each of the studies, to just sort of flip through these categories we had, and then we can open up for, for some questions, some dialogue in, in regards to the different studies. So let me just start then with this first grouping. And in this case, what um, NREL has proposed, and we've gone through and we agree with them, these studies look like they are principally technical studies, um, trying to look at the uh, specific benefits of, of a market or a regional marketplace, if you will, um, but really highlighting some of the technical aspects of, of what that kind of uh, larger footprint could do for operating the electric grid. Um, and so we can come back to this if you like, but Isabella, let's move to the next one, just in terms of a quick flyover. There's definitely a few other studies that have really focused more on just the higher level policy, if you will. Um, and so we put those in this category, um, but you can see we've got at least five studies that seem to be uh, focused more generally on, on the policy, um, including uh, some work by FERC and so forth um, that takes us back a few years, but still some, some stuff that's principally much more recent and as much as just last year in terms of what's gone on in Arizona, Colorado, and, and Oregon. So let's move to the next group. And of course, we always have to have an other category. Um, so we've got a few studies in here. Not only is there things uh, um, having to do with um, the EIM quarterly reports, but more importantly, some work that's been done in other organizations, including grid strategies, looking at the transmission benefits. And if you'll recall, we do need to touch on that as part of the project. There was some other work um, by um, uh, Yale and other organizations, you know, looking at um, what are the value or things to consider in these larger marketplace. And again, going back to that 2016, 2017 timeframe. And I think we did have one other category in here as well. Let's flip it one more time. Yeah, and then of course, different market proposals um, and how to consider what those are. So fair enough to be able to highlight the fact that obviously SPP has done some work, but now we have the Northwest Power Pool and what they've done with their RA program that can clearly help or facilitate uh, regional benefits. Um, so we're gonna at least look at what's uh, some of the benefits that come out of those kinds of efforts as well. And I think that's it, um, Isabel, let's just look. I think there was just the four, yeah. So maybe I can stop there again. And let's see if there's any comments, any suggestions uh, on those studies. Um, certainly open to a dialogue if uh, folks would really think we should move them around into different categories, but recognize that those categories were not really all that rigid. We wanna look in the studies and draw out some of the themes and benefits that they, uh, they provided in regards to our goals here for ACR 188. So let me stop there and see what questions we have. All right, I see one hand raised, so if we could unmute Bonnie Blair. Okay. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Good. Um, this is Bonnie Blair. Uh, I represent the Six Cities Group. Um, question is, will it be part of the project or part of NREL's um, task to sort of make a, a qualitative assessment of each of the studies that may be considered? Or is it more just sort of summarizing the results without kind of evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of the, of the study uh, approach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Scott, maybe I can turn to you on that because we've just now started to think about what an outline and so forth might even be, right? So maybe you can help us out in terms of what NREL is thinking about when we have such a long list of studies. How do we deal with this? It, I'm not sure we can actually, you know, try to assess each of them individually. So is there thoughts on how you still address all of them um, in your, your approach to the, to the workload here? Yeah, I, I think what we were hoping between Brittany and Mark to begin to go through those studies and pull out the the high level, I'd say findings, approaches, understanding of those, and begin to put those, see if there's common themes that are emerging across those, 
but we definitely want this to be more than a literature review, right? Because we want to think about were there questions left unanswered? Are there certain potential topics that are rising to the top of how this may impact uh, California moving forward? So the intent is to go in a little bit more depth than just, okay, here's a review of the studies. Here's what each one found and put it all together in a report. Uh, Bonnie, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but it's, it's really trying to get to that next level as well. I mean, I think it probably answers my question as, as well as it can be answered. At okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it sounds yeah. like you're, you're going beyond just a summary or you're going to try to make some at least high level uh, judgment about, you know, the kind of the strength of the, the strength of the studies. Yeah. And I think that then really pulling out the key issues uh, that are being identified as well as potentially still left unanswered, I think, you know, for whether there's a next phase, but the report will uh, contain, I don't anticipate the report will just be a, a literature review, a summary of every study. It, maybe that's an appendix at that high level, but more of the report I anticipate being kind of that larger analytic approach to those studies. Okay. And I'll say that without David being here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my understanding of the work. Right. Thank okay. You. Thanks, Bonnie. All right. Anything not, else, Isabel? Not seeing anything in the verbal queue, but we did have a few chat questions come in, so I can read those out. Okay. Um, yeah. So first one, it would be helpful to highlight which studies, if any, talk about reduction in both local and GHG emissions with uh, particular emphasis on the frontline communities. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one here. Well, let's take them, let's take them one at a time. Um, I'm opening up the chat. So Michael Colvin. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Michael. But um, I, I'll say this. It's in my view, I, I think we have to address GHG. Um, many of the studies do talk about them. Um, and so I, I think you can expect us to talk about what is the value or benefit of regional markets in regards to reducing GHG emissions. Um, I think what we've seen is that, you know, the regional, the larger footprint can help reduce the amount of uh, power plant start and stops if we're talking about G8, uh, you know, gas fired resources. And that will definitely have uh, a, a positive benefit to local emissions. So. Uh, I think it's a great question, Michael. I think you can expect us to address GHG uh, in, in, that, in that manner. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Uh, what's the next one, Isabella? Yeah, the next one's from Jan Strack. Um, does this mm -hmm. list include the FERC Order 1000 in a regional study process that is conducted each year? Um, it's not. Help me out here, Scott, and your team. I, it's not in there, but Jan, maybe you can help us um, understand uh, why we would need a the study process in, in this effort. Um, my recollection is the resolution asks us to address the uh, impacts on transmission costs with a regional market. And I think we all anticipate that would help reduce transmission costs, but I'm not seeing the direct connection to, for quarter 1000. Can we open up Jan's line and just see maybe a little bit more on where he's going? Yeah, Jan, if you want to raise your hand, you can do so with the raise hand feature. All right, let's unmute Jan. No, it may not. I, I was just thinking that, you know, there's been a lot of work between the regional planning bodies uh, in response to the first mm -hmm. quarter 1000. And was yeah. thinking that that you know there may be some results or product there that is relevant, but maybe not. I you know I don't have a strong feeling, but I just want to make sure you've covered up all the okay. bases. We, all right. we can certainly look at that. Um, yeah, I mean that's the purpose of this call is to identify if there's any potential ones out there that, that we should be looking in. Okay. So Thanks, Jan. Yeah, that's that's good. All right, Isabella. Yeah. Yeah, looks like, looks like yeah. we have one more in the chat from Trisha Blevins. 
I see on the market proposal that EIM was last evaluated in 2013 and it was potential benefits. With more entities in the EIM, will we now discuss actual benefits and impacts as more entities, entities join? Um, and then a follow-up in the relationships between the regional projects, uh, WEIM, WEIS, uh, NWPP, RA, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think the answer is yes, but but Scott, let me, let me turn it to you because um, I think when we first gave you our, our list of projects or, you know, studies. I don't know that we had the EIM studies in there, but the NREL team, maybe you guys thought there was some value in some of those studies in, in the larger context um, of looking at the stuff. So any, any thoughts yeah. on how we address Trisha's question? So I guess but my initial thought is if we can evaluate where studies have been completed already on that have documented the benefits and impacts as the entities have joined that's fair game if it's to do a separate analysis of those benefits i don't think we have the scope or budget or time to do that sure. under this phase of the effort if it's just trying to get this report done so if there is anything yeah. out there that does talk about those actual benefits uh, we'd be happy to see those or, or entertain that but but that's my thinking is that if it's a detailed analysis we don't have the time to dig into that right now yeah Dave, did I, you want to chime in on this one yeah yeah Thanks. i think um it, it might be what they're getting at that the each entity did it, its own analysis before they joined the western energy and balance market but since then the iso puts out a quarterly benefits report um that identifies as as entities go in, um, the benefits that have accrued to each balancing authority, that's how it's divided up. So those are all posted on our website. I think we generally want to use that as a guide to say, I think across the board, the, um, the benefits that were assessed before joining were, were more conservative than what has occurred in, in reality. So um, we can certainly use those uh, quarterly benefits reports um, as a as a mark uh in that direction i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well and it's certainly those quarter reports certainly show at least uh trajectory right stacy that the, the more uh entities join the, the benefits just continue to to increase yeah um so directionally it does that for us I guess the other thing about it, and, and we've always talked about this, is the EIM is only the real-time market. So even though we see that portion of benefits, um, you know, maybe just put this in a form of a question to you, Scott, wouldn't we uh, put in context that the day ahead and the rest of the market um, would just add on to what we've seen in the real-time EIM benefits, right? I mean, in terms of thinking at the, what the total value stream is, um in uh eim versus the total uh, day ahead market yeah i would think so and i would think as stacy said but the initial studies were very conservative and i know david has talked about that as well that the the benefits seem to be yeah. going at a significantly higher rate so if we can suss some of that out i would do that and i see Brittany potentially wants to weigh in here on this as well okay yeah i was just gonna say um I uh, we do have two additional studies that aren't listed, um, and one of them is a more recent study about implications of expanding the EIM um, to include day ahead market services. So that's another uh, 2020 market proposal study that we're planning on analyzing as well. Um, there's also a technical study that that wasn't included in the initial list. Um, great. Okay, great. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Brittany. All right, looks like one more um, question came in through the chat. Uh, let's see. Has anyone asked whether Grid Labs advancing resource adequacy analysis with GridPath RA Toolkit 2026 Western RA case study should be on the list? I don't think anyone asked that. Yeah, <laughs> no one's asked. <laughs> we can make a note of that one. All right. Yeah, Carrie, I don't know if you had a follow up comment to that question. 
Yeah, Carrie, anything more you can share with us on um, on that? I mean, obviously, we're going to be looking for comments. You can provide the comments, but we've got the time here. Maybe you could give us a little bit of, of thought um, about the value of that. Okay, she's just saying it's a good one, and they have a toolkit. All right. All right, we'll take a look at it, Scott. Yep. All right. Yep. Anything else? Any other comments? Any other suggestions? Not seeing any in the queue, but uh, Roy, do we have any on the phone? We do not have any on the phone at this time. Okay. All right. Well, let's go to the, the next slide, Isabella, and just uh, maybe it'll trigger something as we talk about, um, you know, where we go from here. So there was a question early on in the call here, and I'm sure everybody may be thinking about it now about um, how to provide us some comments. Uh, we are asking for comments um, uh, by October 26th. And if you go to this webpage, um, the regional solutions webpage, um, right at the top of that, we've added some material in order to provide comments to us on ACR 188. Um, and in there is also a, a uh, stakeholder comment uh, uh, sheet gives you um, about four or five, six questions that we'd like you to try to address for us. You know, do we have the right set of studies? Are there any additional studies? Um, you know, are there studies that uh, maybe you feel like are, are don't need to be on the list? Um, but we've tried to ask those questions in different ways so you can provide that feedback to us. Um, and then if you submit those to this email box, of course, any other questions or comments you might have, to info ACR 188 at CAISO.com. We'll monitor that email box and receive your comments and uh, get those over to uh, the NREL team as quick as we can. But um, it's certainly an opportunity for us to provide any thoughts or ideas you have to us on uh, how we should address the goals of ACR 188 as, uh, um, as, as they're written. Um, so let me stop there and just say, um, First of all, Stacy, Scott, any other comments, just closing remarks here, and then we'll open it back up again and see if our stakeholders have any other questions for us. Um, one, I thought we also had some other opportunities where folks would be able to weigh in kind of on the, like the, the draft final report. I don't know if we want to mention that again, that you know, we, we don't just want to get your input on studies and then we're going to come back with a final report, right? We want to make this kind of an iterative process. And I forget right. when we talked about doing that, Stacey, maybe it was on your very first slide that was showing the, the timeline, but we, we do have built that into the schedule to actually get feedback from folks on the draft yeah. report. And so yeah, thanks, Scott. thanks, Scott. And, um, and at this point, this point, um, it's a fair point. I didn't add that in here only because we haven't really decided what are those exact right. dates. Um, but as I said it in the opening and for folks that maybe have joined us a couple minutes late, what we are looking to do is get the draft report out in very early December and then give everybody and we'll have another call, um, be able to have some dialogue about that draft report and then ask folks to give us uh, some written comments as we get to the middle of December. We are hoping to wrap that up before we get into the holidays. So folks aren't worried about ACR 188 during the Christmas holiday. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's our goal, right, Scott? So get the draft yes. out early December, get some comments before the holidays, and then when we come back after the first of the year, then we can hit the ground running. So, right. uh, Stacy, did you have something to chime in with us here? No, I was going to suggest going back to that slide, the schedule slide, just oh. as, as Scott was talking about it. Um, there is oh, okay. a comment from Doug Marker in the chat that came up um, that says that raises if you anticipate providing review comments to the legislature along with the report itself. So asking whether um, we would provide the stakeholder comments um, along with the report. And I, I don't think we, we've gotten to that level of detail in our discussions. I think it would depend if we can address the comments within the report. Um, and if we can't, perhaps there's a, there's a, um, a moment where we identify you know, why we can't, but we haven't yet gotten to that level of detail, I don't think, as a team. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we can certainly anticipate, right, Stacy, that we may get some um, 
you know, additional thoughts that, uh, you know, we can uh, try to capture and then still forward those to the legislature, uh, you know, um, as part of the report. Maybe it's in a, you know, whatever, however we structure it, right? Could be an appendix or some other way to capture that extra material. Maybe that's where Doug's going with his thought, you know. Um, so I agree. We're not there yet, but, but Doug, thanks for the heads up because uh, those are things we'd like to capture and make it available to the, to the legislature in the report. Yeah, I would agree. All right, looks like we have uh, Carrie Bentley on the line. Hey, Carrie. Roy, if we could unmute Carrie's line. Hey, this is Carrie Bentley with WPTF. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, great. Um, I was wondering if in scope, as we're preparing our comments, whether things perhaps slightly more theoretical um, that you're looking for, um, just maybe a quick example that might help uh, you answer this question is, you know, like a, the Strape Consulting Group and the Brattle Group have done a lot of work on, you know, the benefits of having large and small systems with neighboring assistance. Um, for resource adequacy planning, um, and a lot of work on, you know, reserve margins under small and large systems. Is that within the scope of this, or is it more just practical, looking at not theoretical and just practical west-wide studies? Um, um, yeah, go Scott. <laughs> I was gonna go say first. <laughs> And I still get an internet unstable here. That that's something I think I'd probably want to defer to get David's thoughts about that. We would certainly want to know about those studies, Carrie, to make sure that we're at least you know, aware of those and what those summary findings are. My guess is it would be pretty good to you know, at least potentially review that and flag if there's any uh, potential, I, I guess, results that might come out of those or impacts, potential impacts is probably a better word. But, but that's my initial thought. If, if you could provide that in the feedback, the official feedback mechanism that Phil mentioned, that would be great. And yeah. the specific the specific um, analyses that were performed as well. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then I you talked about the comments a little bit. Um, are you just looking for a, a list or, and I know you said feedback on why it should be included or, or not be included, um, but I, I feel pretty, um, I don't know, uneducated <laughs> to, on what the purpose of this is to be able to say why it should be included or not be included, but we could include a, a summary of why we think it's interesting or, or relevant. Is that what you're looking for in the comments? Yes. Carrie, yeah. um, that's exactly right. Um, what we're the the questions um, are basically asking: Are there any studies that we may have missed? Are there any studies that you know we we didn't need to have? Um, but more importantly, if if there are studies that we miss, and it sounds like well, that's what you're suggesting, then um, you know why? What what's the value? What should you you know just help target us so we are um, looking at it in the same way you are. And then we can try to work it into, you know, obviously the material that we're getting from from the other studies. Um, so that's really what we're trying to uh, seek in that comment form. Um, so I hope that provides a little bit more value. I think you'll see it when you open it up. That set of questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can open it up real quick right right now, um, because uh, we're we're trying to give you that context and also ask you to give us the context, you know, if you want us to add something. Okay, makes sense, thanks. Yep. Anything yeah, I would, else? I would say we wanna err on the side of collecting more to start with. Yeah. And, you know, a month yeah. from now, find out, oh, we missed something. So it's a you know, cast a wide net and then we'll kind of sort through those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Looks like Ken has a comment. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, I was just going to say, as, as um, Phil, you noted on slide nine, um, that the you know our list isn't static, and in fact. Um, 
as Brittany pointed out, there's two new studies that we'll be adding to that list probably today. When we do make updates, we'll um, we'll keep the same link, but we'll just put in parens after the um, uh, the link for the uh, for the list of studies, the, uh, the update date. So, for example, today we'll we'll put 1017 update, and we'll include those two new studies or any others that we may uh, be including after the call. I just wanted to point that out. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Ken. I'm not seeing any other questions. Okay. Well, um, that's what we had for today for the discussion. Um, encourage everybody to look at the look at the list um, that we have. Look at that those questions that we have in the stakeholder comment form that's on the website here. And uh, if you would try to get back to us by the 26th so that we can work with NREL to now start focusing on at least putting that draft report together for early December timeframe. Um, Stacy, any other uh, closing thoughts or, or to share with the group? Just appreciate uh, folks engagement on this and uh, the comments that came in today, as well as the comments that we'll receive. Um, just uh, appreciate the engagement as Scott said, casting a wide net here at the, at the onset will help us create a good report along the way. All right. Well, if there are no further questions, I think we can conclude. Uh, thank you all for joining us and have a great rest of your afternoon.